right, okay. Let's cut the bullshit. Let's bring in Rusty Cooley. I think Rusty's ready. Hey, man. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Excited yeah, man, to have this you. This is here. gonna be a blast. Thanks for having me on the show. I remember back in the early 2000s, you have like instructional videos. Can you tell me a little bit how you kind of started? Yeah, it kind of started, and I think it was '97. I got my first seven string, and I I, quit, I was, I'd been playing in local bands, and I was just kind of fed up with it, and uh, I decided that you know I'm gonna go back to the woodshed and reinvent my playing and. And along the way, the, the internet just started to take off at that time, I think, or but for guitar players at least. So it was a great vehicle for me to get, you know, some recognition and get known outside of Houston. You know what I mean? I discovered a website called Chops from Hell, and that's where I got my start with instructional stuff. It's uh, and they're still up. Um, you can still get uh, my first four instructional products there. It's like Shred Guitar Manifesto, The Art of Picking, Extreme Pentatonics, and uh, Basic Training. And I put those out before my first album was out. Um, so that really kind of helped build a name for me as well as just, you know, I wrote to Buckethead, uh, which is pretty, pretty cool. He actually replied to me and sent me this letter with his, you know, handwriting and stuff all crazy. And, you know, during that time I was, you know, really studying Sean Lane. Sean was one of my biggest uh, guitar heroes. And I was mailing, mailing cassettes and CDs to anybody that would listen to me. I started going through like Guitar Player Magazine, Guitar World, and looking for phone numbers just to cold call people and it actually worked um made made some good connections with uh i don't know if you remember guitar one magazine yes i was in that and guitar player actually did a review of my first instructional shred guitar manifesto it's a constant thing you you can't uh you can't sit around and wait for it to come to you you you've got to take yourself to it you know what i mean that's the big thing <laughs> When you were growing up, were you listening to a lot of the shrapnel record stuff? What what was it like for you to survive, to want to carry on doing what you're doing, the, the music you love? Yeah, it was it was tough, but you know you do what you do. You know what I mean? That's I mean I can't change who I am. I kind of boycotted that style of music. I was like, man, if there's no guitar solos, I'm not listening. This is sacrilege. Um, now, of course, I've changed my attitude. And there's a lot of great bands from that era that I know completely enjoy and missed out on what was happening. And it was hard to find inspiration for music because there wasn't a lot of people putting out stuff that was good. And that's kind of when I started getting more into heavier music. It was like I said, you know, I, I was on a mission, you know, I wanted to do what my guitar heroes did, you know. You know, I was, I was a huge Randy Rhodes guy in the beginning. And anything Randy do, did when I was a kid, I had to do too. That's, what, that's why I started teaching. I was wondering because look, when I was growing up, I started playing the guitar around 92, 93, and I got into Dream Theater, Symphony X, all these things. People were making fun of me a lot, saying, why are you listening to this shit? This is just, did you get any of that stuff when you were learning to play the guitar? <laughs> yeah, um, I did, but I just, I just didn't care, man. I just blew it off. I remember one time uh, somebody said to me, Oh, you're one of those guys that goes widdly, 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 right? And I said, no, I'm one of those guys that can actually play my guitar. You know what I, mean? I remember you and Ibanez and Dorsa at some point, right? Did that kind of make mm -hmm. you gravitate to play yeah. an Ibanez because a lot of the shredders were playing it? And when I first started playing seven string, that was really the only company that was making seven string. Matter of fact, when I bought my first Ibanez seven string, they weren't even making them at the time. The story is that I was told is they had 70 bridges left. So they released 70 of the black and green ones universes and the store that i was teaching at happened to get one so i bought it you know immediately because i had one it was like great i want to play seven string now they don't make them and then um i got a jackson endorsement uh it was kind of on an on an accident um really i was at the same guitar shop that i was teaching at that i bought the ibanez i was walking in the door one day and the jackson rep was there and he was showing off their new seven string and uh one of the employees said hey rusty come over and check this out and he introduced me he said this is our seven string guitar teacher and he asked me to play the guitar so i sat down and played it for a few seconds and handed it back to him and i said cool so how do i get an endorsement he goes well here call this guy you know that was it man you know called that dude and uh sent him some stuff and and we we were off and running man yeah that that jackson was awesome man it had it had 
one of the thinnest necks. It was, it was definitely thinner than Yabina's necks, which is hard to believe, but that was from that was a custom Jackson. It wasn't one of the production models. I had this guitar designed right when I was right when I graduated high school. And you see the size of that cutaway, man. Right? Oh so wow. I had been playing on I had learned yeah, I had learned how to play on on a, on a Jackson style Randy Rhodes that me and my dad built out of Warmoth parts, right? And I wanted to start playing strat style guitars, but every time I got on the strats, like my hand would hit, you know, when I got up here. So this guy that I was uh, that built guitars at, at a guitar shop I was teaching at, we took this was a Warmoth body also, and we just started cutting away at it. So I mean, e even now this is the most massive cutaway on any guitar that I own. You can see that I had the heel beveled and you know the cutaway for for you know depth as far and, and width as as well, so you can get in here and do the big stretches and stuff like that. So that's this is where it all started right here, man. That is awesome. Nice. This is really good that I'm so, talking to a guitar player that knows how guitar works. Knowing the technical yeah, stuff right. and be able to translate it, it makes it easier for the people to build the thing. Other special features on this guitar that you know, like that you you wanted to have on this guitar that you couldn't have before, or, you know, stuff like that. I don't want to say anything disrespectful to anyone, but other companies that I've been with were very reluctant to go all the way with all of my crazy ideas. Um, Ormsby guitars, everything that I've asked them has been a yes. The the reason this guitar has such crazy cutaway on it is because it's it's got 27 full frets, but the thing is. It's got complete access to all 27 frets. It's neck through, so you get full access. You know, I told I told Perry when we were working on this guitar, I said, I told him, I said, eventually I'd like to make a, a guitar that I have the exact same access to all the frets. Like if I'm at the highest fret on the guitar, I don't want it to feel any different than if I'm at the fifth fret. And he's like, well, why do you want to wait? Let's do that now. And I was like, oh, I was used to being told no. Um, played EMGs for years, I love them. They were the only pickup company that I could find that could cut and still have clarity and on the low strings without just being all muddy and, and whatnot. So, um, so I'm working with EMG at the moment to try to get you know some kind of seven string pickup, single coil made. I don't know how many people know much about fan frets. You generally can't have a tremolo with a fan fret neck, but since this this fan is going all the same way, so the, this becomes the bridge becomes the zero fret or the straight fret. So I think this is one of the first guitars ever to have a fan fret and a, and a Floyd. Um, yes, I and, when I saw that I thought, wow, finally someone done a multi-scale guitar with a tremolo. People say, how much does the guitar cost? If they're the other one, do you remember? Okay, they're from Australia. So whether you buy an Australian one or you buy their import model, an Australian one is going to be obviously more expensive because that would be the equivalent of a USA. I think that one is gonna. If you order that, it's it's about thirty four or something like that. Um, and then the import versions, I believe, are gonna be. They'll, they'll be under two. I'm pretty sure. Three thousand something dollars. That's not that's not expensive for a guitar like that. This that's is it. like a you race never, car. You you can never go. Oh well, the the action's not very good, or the cutaway's not deep enough, or this or that. No man, it's not the guitar, bro. It's you. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't you can't make any excuses anymore. This is a. This is an Ormsby telly. It's called a TX model, which is pretty appropriate. It's like looking a telly in the mirror, bending mirror in a in a. Right. In a <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And this one's got a pretty crazy fan on it too. And you can see this one has 27 frets, but it's not 27 full frets. And it, well, the cool thing is, you know, it's got a push pull pot, so I get my single coils, man. What kind of students you usually get? All levels? What What is it like? So for me, it's much more stimulating to teach all ages, all styles that I can possibly teach. So I might go from a seven-year-old little kid to uh, some old dude that wants to strum chords around a campfire. For me, that's much more stimulating because I'm constantly thinking differently every hour, every half hour. When you're doing the same thing over and over and over again, it gets old really fast. And I think a lot of people have this perception that they have to be at a certain level to take lessons from me. And that's not the truth at all. You know, I personally prefer to teach all ages, all levels, whatever, you know what I mean?
I remember you came to our show. They told me Rusty Cooley is coming. Oh, wow, cool. Rusty Cooley is coming. Blah, 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 blah. I remember that. We mm. couldn't be bothered talking to you because we were too busy getting drunk and trying to get laid. You think we're yeah. a bunch of assholes then? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. I was like, man, because you were in the next room with some chick and it was just you and her. <laughs> and, and, you, you know, I kept looking and you're like, I'll be out in a minute, man. It's like, okay. So finally I was like, man, I'm screw it. I'm going home, dude. <laughs> you know? I just yeah. wanted to clear up you. Sorry about that. <laughs> absolutely, man. Absolutely. You know, I'm sure I would have been doing the same thing, you know, for sure. Yeah, yeah. You know? Anyway, just yeah. so you let, let you know, it didn't work. Completely failed to me that night. So didn't get anything either way. Damn, man. <laughs> I gotta ask you, how many guitars have you got throughout the years? Um, I have given some to friends for sure. Um, that was very cool to be able to do that. Since COVID started, it's picked up. Business has picked up tremendously for me. So, so if there's a positive in all this, that would be it. You know what I mean? Um, but but I've went through some a couple of really rough years, and I had to sell guitars and stuff to pay bills and shit like that. You know, just to get by. So I would have a lot of guitars, man, if I didn't have to sell any of them. I mean, a lot, dude. I mean, we want the yeah, shop I mean, I got, to sell your guitars yeah. instead. Yeah, right. So I got one, two, three, and I think there's four in the closet. So, you know, it's, it's under 20, but, you know, it would be like stupid if I had all my guitars. Oops. <laughs> Sorry. But yeah. <laughs> Dude, that was just some seriously insane shredding. I think that's the most notes we've ever played on my channel on Twitch. I didn't feel, you know, like any pressure, you know, to play. And, you know, if you make a mistake, that's life, dude. You know what I mean? Shit happens. We all make mistakes. And I mean, if I had any advice to give younger players, it's learn how to make a mistake. People can take lessons off you from around the world. They can contact you on rustycooley.com. Is that right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much, man. This is awesome. It was a pleasure, man. I'll I'll catch you later, dude. All right. Sounds great, brother. We'll talk Take soon. care of yourself. See ya. All right. Bye. That was some insane shit. Um, I learned some stuff, man. Some of these high hyper shred sweet picking is like I just started doing it, watching him doing it. You know what? I'm gonna try this. It was super fast picking. It was super insane. Hope you can join me again. Thank you, thank you. And I look forward to getting you back here. For some more fun stuff. All right. Take care. Take care, everybody. 
Bye 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 bye.